So yeah, let's watch the next part of the story here. Ivan News, he goes into Zordon's chamber and he shocks his ass and then he takes it over and says, Fuck you, Power Rangers. And that's basically the extent of the story. As you can see, they actually tell the part of the story where they go to another planet called Phaedos. They go and find the Master Warrior who will help them gain the power that they need. Now see, this is the part of the game that's pretty sad because this whole time you could have um, you could have actually played this part of the game, but no, instead they kind of just cop out and make it into little cutscenes right here. And yeah, see they go to Phaedos, the power of the ranger, the power ranger run into Dulcia, Master Warrior, who might I add is kind of hot in the movie. She's part of the Tengu tribe, they go into the jungle and they find the power. And it's like, what the hell? They find the power? Well, how come I can't play the part where they actually go find the power? Because in the movie, it's actually some cool fight scenes. But here on the game, yeah, see? More cutscenes. And look at they become the Ninjetti, and it's like, fuck, well how come I didn't get to play that part? Well, I don't know. And if I could go back in time, I would go ask the people who created this game, what the fuck? Now, I must mention that I was thinking about playing the Super Nintendo version of this game, but when I looked and found out that uh, the game is completely different, it came out before the movie came out, and the only thing Ivan News in the whole movie is at the end where you fight Ivan News. The rest of the game is straight up boring. I was playing it, and it's really boring. It has not little to do with the movie, even less so than this game. So I wanted to just play the one that I was familiar with. Because I had a Sega Genesis, and I had this game, and if you didn't know that I'm playing this on a Sega Genesis emulator, so... Back when I said I could only play NES, Super Nintendo, and GBA, I was a liar. I now have a Sega Genesis emulator that allows me to record easily, so... That is a whole nother library. And now the power is on. The power is on. That's gotta be one of the cheesiest fucking lines ever. Power is on. What, like, like the power is gonna be off? Seriously. Whatever. Now that we've wasted a bunch of time, let's go ahead and play stage two. And let's go ahead and be... Let's go ahead and be the pink ranger, yeah. I like to, you know, show every single ranger while I play. There's no reason not to. It's not like anyone is stronger than another. And this level's pretty much like the first level. You just fight in a whole crap load of these freaking oozemans. TJ Oozmanzadas. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't call him that before until I just did this, because that is a funny name. Oh man. Just looking at that pink ranger, isn't she sexy? Oh yeah. She's just so pink and and uh shiny. I <laughs> shiny. Shiny and pink, that turns everyone on, doesn't it? Whoa. Well, I'm not even gonna go any further with that one. That was... yeah. Just stop. Anyways. <sighs> Kimberly. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that the girl who played Kimberly... I think the only other thing I've ever seen the girl who played Kimberly in the Power Rangers... Is, like, anything I've ever seen her in besides Power Rangers is Suzy Q. Anybody remembers that 90s movie, Suzy Q? Oh, Suzy Q! <laughs> Suze Q. Oh, Suze Q. How I with you. Suze Q. Yeah, but Suze Q, that, you know, there's like a teenager that got killed by in a car crash or some shit. And then she, like, was a ghost. And she was trying to help people or something. I don't even remember the story. It was basically like Ghost the movie with a lot less sex and more teenage angst. And it had Kimberly from the Power Rangers being the girl that died, so that was all I really remember about it. And as for the rest of the Power Rangers, I have no fucking clue what they have done with their lives. The only one I know is Tommy, and he has actually continued his career with the Power Rangers as far as I know. I mean, I don't know what he's doing to this day, but I know he was in, in recent car incarnations of the Power Rangers. I don't know how long ago that is now, but the Power Ranger for life. He must have that tattoo tattooed to his body somewhere by now. Power Ranger for life. Mm. 
So as I said before, this was kind of an inspiration from uh, Super Mario RPG Axum Rangers. So I'll probably be posting this right alongside that part of the game. Just to kind of coincide together, you know? Because I am almost there on the actual posting of the LP that this will be perfect timing to put this up along with it. And we are just whooping the ass out of more and more Oozmen. Yeah, as you can see, this game is not all that exciting, but I played all the Super Nintendo Power Rangers games, and I must say that those ones are all garbage in comparison. You don't even get to be a power like a powered up Power Ranger until like halfway through the level. Ah, uh, damn it, get off me. But you don't get to be a powered up Power Ranger until like halfway through the level, and I was like, how disappointing. The whole point of being or playing a Power Ranger game is to control the damn Power Rangers who can actually fight, not get their teenage ass teenage asses handed to them. So starting off a level where you have to be the regular teenager without the power suit was really disappointing. So this game was a must was the must LP of all the Power Rangers games. And it's the least uh, boring, I'm gonna say, because this one's actually got fast pace. Those games are all slow motion and shit. And all the putties and enemies require like one hit and they just die instantly. It's pretty like, it's pretty uh, anticlimactic. At least in this game, it's more like a fighting game. Where all the enemies have their own power bars, as you can see up in the top corner, where you see the name of the enemies they actually have their own power bar. So yeah, this is definitely the best of the old uh, Power Rangers games. Honestly, I don't know any other Power Rangers games besides the ones on Sega and Nintendo. So, I mean, as far as I know, there's got to be more Power Rangers games. I don't see how in the world there could only be these ones, with all the 20 bajillion incarnations of Power Rangers that exist to this day. And thinking back, I'm trying to think back uh, to when I started watching the show. When exactly I stopped watching the show. And, I, I don't know, it's not really coming to me right now. I might have to think of that for another day. I'm trying to think of other things about the show. Yeah, I think I will. I'll just go ahead and focus on what we're doing in this level, which we are almost done with, hopefully, here. We are running low on time, so hopefully we can finish this off here soon enough. I know we're getting near the end here, so, I mean, it's not like I'm cutting it that close. I feel like I'm going to be going way over time. The only reason I'm even cutting it this close is because I am I showed that long-ass cutscene where of basically all of the movie that is supposed to be in this game that is not in the game. And as far as I know, the Super Nintendo version isn't any better at showing more of the movie than this dude. So, it's not like I'm showing you the lesser of two games. I mean, surprising in this case, the Sega Genesis version of a game is actually better than the Super Nintendo version of the game, which in a lot of cases is not exactly true. Which does bring me to another important point I must bring up in one of my, while I do this game, about uh, differences between Sega, game, Sega Genesis versions and Nintendo versions of games. And I will, I know that's kind of vague right now, I'm kind of leaving you hanging there, but I will definitely bring that up later in this LP at some point, as I have a very important point to make about that. And this level's got to be over soon. Come on, die, you ooze bastards. You ooze bastards. You oozy, ah. You oozy, ooze bastards. It's like in this game, like, they have that thing where they have invincibility when they get up from the ground, but they don't flash or anything, so you don't know how long it lasts. You just have to know that you can't hit them right when they get up off the ground. Ah, get off me. Oh man, we are not at the end of the level. Well, I might be forced to put this into the second video then. We'll see. In fact, that's probably what's going to end up happening. This is going to probably end up being video number two. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I'll just put this level in the next level in the next video. Or, no, I'll just make them. Yeah, I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll stop trying to think about it on video though. <laughs> I suppose I could just bring up the point I was going to bring up earlier uh, about how the difference between Super Nintendo and Sega games, uh, like versions of games, 
I was going to bring up the Turtles in Time LP that I just did. I was actually tempted to do the Hyperstone Heist, which is uh, the Sega Genesis version of Turtles in Time. Alright, never mind. Let's move on to the next level. Oh, we aren't even on the next level, never mind. Okay, well, let's finish this level first. Let me finish what I was saying then. Uh, Hyperstone Heist, which was actually the poor man's version of Turtles in Time, and it was very disappointing. I played through the whole game. And while there are big differences, there are shitty differences. And I'm gonna pick the Falcon's Orb because it's awesome. But, there are shitty differences. The whole game is basically ripped off of Turtles in Time in a crappy way, and then they minimize the amount of bosses and, you know, extra enemy characters in the game. And it's like, what the fuck? All they did was dumb down the awesomeness that is Turtles in Time. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now. You know who the bosses are in Turtles in Time? I mean, in Hyperstone Heist? First boss? is Leatherhead. The second boss is Rocksteady. The third boss is Tatsu. Yeah, that little Asian dude, general guy from fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, if you remember that. And then, oh yeah, and then you fight Baxter Stockman in his scientist form. He's flying around in a machine. And then you fight Krang in his body. And then you fight Super Shredder. So there is a total of six bosses in that game six bosses which means there's six stages and which means that game sucks and there's actually a level where you go through a boss gauntlet and all you do is you fight a different color pilot swap of Leatherhead, Rocksteady, and Tatsu and it's like well this is a perfect opportunity to throw in three more new enemies but no what do you do you rehash the ones you already fought and I just thought that the whole game in general was just straight up rip off throws in time while none of the levels are like 100% the same they basically used the same fucking areas and the same kind of things. It's just so many different things about it I really don't like that I I just had to bring it up here since, since I started talking about differences between Sega Genesis versions of games and so Super Nintendo. And like I said, sometimes Sega gets it better and sometimes Nintendo gets it better and majority of the time it's Nintendo. And that's just a shining example of that. And as I keep rambling about that, how much that game annoyed me, I whooped the ass out of this... What is this thing called? Scorpion Tron or Scorpatron? Scorpatron. Sounds like something that should have been in... In fucking, uh... Transformers. Scorpatron. Look out for Scorpatron. Megatron. Megatron's, uh, main man. Scorpatron. You know how it is. Yeah, this is... This... This... A part, these parts of the game where you fight as the Megazords and stuff is is a perfect example of how all old Godzilla games should have been made. Because this is like big monster on big monster, good action, fast paced, fighting game style. I mean, it would have been pretty awesome to have a Godzilla game in this style. Anyways, I'm done digressing in this one, and I'm gonna go ahead and just stop here. And there's some point in this video where I'll find a good place to split this up, so this is probably gonna be the end of the second video. So I'm just going to go ahead and say peace here at the uh, point screen, which it takes forever sometimes. Wow. Okay. Just shut up, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Let's Play Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. Peace.